a gift to be here at Nexus. Um, so as you said, I'm Alexandra, I'm from Norway, and I'm here to talk a little bit about the ecological consciousness that connects us all and indigenous people. And of course, all of that has to be wrapped in my story, because that's the only way we learn through the growing growth of our own lives. So my story actually started here in New York City. I lived in the concrete jungle of New York City, and I had a career as a model that was getting better and better. I was working seven days a week, traveling all over the world at the age of 15. And then I reached a point where I was completely exhausted, and there was no connection between me and me anymore. I had forgotten about all the things that means the things you would love to do and not just the things that you think you should do. And one day, I was walking home from a film set and I got robbed and held at gunpoint. You can call that a universal bitch slap, that's what I call it. A wake up call telling me to step back into myself. And of course, it's, um, I was only 18 years old at the time, so I was super scared to tell my parents about it. So I ended up um, just going home to my flat, full of anxiety about what had happened. And one of the most extraordinary things that happened the moment the gun was pointing at my forehead was that the man who robbed me said, you don't want to die, so start living. When I came back to my flat, the first thing that stared back at me was a globe, one I had been given by my grandfather. And something told me I just need to spin this globe, and wherever my finger lands, I'll go. Two weeks later, I was on the plane to Namibia, because it was Namibia my finger landed on. I'd never heard of Namibia before, not much at least. A little bit more than Donald Trump, who calls it Namibia. Um, <laughs> but I had traveled all over the world, but when I flew over Namibia, it was different. So I came to the African continent, like most uh, white people, I guess, with uh, all the khaki gear, um, hand sanitizer, um, malaria tablets, cameras and laptop computers with a big mission to help animals and people so that they can have a bright outcome and I can have a good conscious, uh, consciousness. So um, I started working with wildlife to realize my dream of being Pocahontas and living uh, with uh, animals. Um, little did I know that the only thing I was sustaining was my African ego and not the environment. I couldn't be further away from nature. So on a new mission or looking for a new purpose, I ended up meeting the Jungpwa Sisan people. They are one of the oldest cultures in the world. They have the most genetic matches to everyone on the planet. If you look into the eyes of an old Bushman woman or man, you see the world. You see you. They taught me about becoming one with nature. That plants talk and that animals think. But I had a long way to go. Not because being one with nature is rocket science, but because there are so many limitations within me as a living creature. Because I, like most people, have created a Sigma machine full of codes that is maintaining a software full of viruses. It's funny, because we like upgrade our phones all the time, right? And we forget to do the same with ourselves. And sometimes our gadgets are even more connected to nature than we are, because at least they're running on like software it's called Mountain Lion and Snow Leopard. <laughs> the Bushmen, the Jungfrasi Bushmen, taught me their language, which is a click language. And I would make so many mistakes. My name is Nisa, by the way. It's very hard to hear that when it's like over a microphone. <laughs> but there's clicks in every word. Um, and I would make so many mistakes. 
but they don't have a word for a mistake. They were just so happy and proud to share their culture and knowledge with me. And that was when I learned about their greatest threat. Their greatest threat is not to live in harmony with Mother Nature, but it is to coexist with this Mother Modern. And I would like to introduce you to Mother Modern. I know you already know her, but On Mother Modern, there are people desperately looking for a home so that we can tell people that we are people with a home or with an address. We put in windows and doors and, and driveways and everything to feel more at home, but at the same time, we have never felt so little at home. And, you know, we used to be nomads that felt at home everywhere, and the modern nomads feel at home nowhere. And in the process of all of this, first of all, we got comfortable enough to tell the first people of this land that we have the first priority of the land. And secondly, we forgot that Earth is our true home, but no one treats it like home. We leave our dishes, our crap, and all our trash resting out the front door. But you know what, I'm not here to tell you about all the evils. I'm here to talk about the light. And darkness is just here to make light shine brighter. But remember, don't close your eyes. You know, we're deep underwater where we actually can't breathe. And we float around with scuba diving gear pretending to breathe. And that's sort of where we are right now. And Mahatma Gandhi once said that the greatness of a nation and its moral progress is, to, is defined by the way its animals are treated. But what can we do for animals, nature, or the environment if we don't recognize that we are nature? I have worked with the Junkwasi people for more than eight years. And in those eight years, I have tried to tell their story. I have tried to rebuild what has been torn down. I have tried to inspire the world with their way of seeing the world. But I have also been a coward, and I have also been scared to face what is really happening. Because the Trojan horse of modernity has moved in, and it's moved in fast. And it came with its sugar, its diseases, its weapons, its systems of rule. And probably the scariest for me that was brought to them is the illusion of a better world. And in this better world, there are people gasping for air, eating to fill empty spaces, starving because we don't have space for anything more. Is this earth? Is this where we are living? And worst of all, we have governments all over the world who are busy committing genocides, slow modern genocides, on the first people of its land. There are two ways to kill. You can actively kill or you can watch someone die. This counts for nature as much as it counts for people. But it's up to us to decide. Because understanding nature and sustainability is not about saving one rhino one elephant, or to solve hunger with crisis management every time that occurs. Because the problem doesn't lie there. The real hunger is in us. And that is an emptiness so grand that no aid organization has been able to do anything about it. But you and I, individuals, we can. My name is Alexandra, and I live on Earth. And I wish I could tell you as simple as a tree what my purpose is. But all I know is that I'm growing into the light and I try to make some right decisions along the way. When I was a child, I would create worlds within worlds. There was no, no limitation to creation. I dreamt freely. The world was possibilities. And then I grew up and I grew out of my own true nature. 
and I started walking around like a victim of the past or a prisoner of the future and I would tell myself every day that I don't know what to do with my life and that I'm nothing special. But if I'm present, I will tell you that I am a woman. I am nature. I have roots underneath my foot soles, knowing that I'm home in myself. I am everything that I see. Rewilding is not about going deep into the bush and living like the ancient, but it is to honor and recognize the knowledge and, and understanding of indigenous people and learn and extract ancient knowledge and apply it on modern problems. That is rewilding. And because I have to round this up, I just want to show you the people that I have the greatest admiration for, who has also more, you know, they're not connecting, they're, they, they're reconnecting people. Um, and that's, that's what they're busy doing. This is my mother, Toshe, and that's what I will finish off with. She said, if you can see that tree over there, or that person, or that animal, then it is you. Now, how are you going to treat it? I didn't invite your ego, your image, your occupation. I'm inviting your heart. The only true and intelligent thing that connects us all. We have wildness and interconnectivity as a fellow noun for all of us. And there's an old healer. And his name is Puka. And he said, if I can heal myself, then I can heal the earth. It starts with rewilding your mind and reconnecting to the mother that birthed us all. And that is when we can connect, when we can understand that love is the most important ingredient in solving any challenges or issues. It starts with you, it starts with me, and then we can choose what should exist. Thank you.